Welcome back to Here's Next Door. Thank you all for joining us for another Station Cribs. This is a very special episode. We're at the HME factory and we're going to go see how fire trucks are made. So let's go take a look. So this factory is located in Wyoming, Michigan, which is just outside of Grand Rapids. Uh, we're going to be meeting up with Russell. He's their marketing director, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about the company. Hi. Hi, good morning. We're looking for Russell. Yes, I will go grab him for you, okay? If you want to take a seat, I'll help you, okay? Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Russell. I'm here. All right, nice Mike. to meet you. It's a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, it's been a long time. We started this almost a year ago, you and I talking back and yes, forth. Yes, it has taken a while to put it together. So, We're glad you're here today, though. Yeah, we love it. You know, it's my hometown. I'm from Grand Rapids, so making my way back to Michigan is always a special trip for me. But we've seen a couple of your trucks as we've been doing tours across America, and we love them. So we wanted to come and see how it's all done. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on? Sure. We'll, we'll spend some time in the plant today, but we'd like to give you a brief setup if we could. Just in the conference room over here just for a moment. Okay, perfect. All right. All right. Nice little conference room you got here. Yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's homey. Yeah. We like it. So tell us a little bit about your company. You know, the HME is a, a pretty big known name, even on the East Coast from where I'm at. So how did this all come about? How did you create or how did the company come about? Well, the, the credit really goes to uh, the family. We're, we're privately held, right? We're not a big publicly traded company. It's all caught up in quarterly earnings and all those sort of things, right? We're, we're smaller. We're, we're, we'd like to think we're more nimble. Okay. And uh, because we're privately owned, we really look after our employees and our customers. So that's our priorities, right? Customers being the fire service or fire department. And um, so we'd like to just give you a sense really quickly of... Um, kind of the background of the company or where we come from. Okay, right? okay. So, so HME Aaron's Fox is all about fire apparatus and fire apparatus only. However, we're part of the Aton group. Okay. The Aton group consists of uh, 14 different companies. They were all started by Jack Goodale, who's um, on the screen here. Okay. And what, what if we uh, go to the audio later on, you'll, you'll hear that Jack is just the most approachable guy, right? Just uh, down to earth, Grand Rapids, salt of the earth, right? Right, right. He, he and their family have been here for, for decades. Okay. Uh, I think they started the business back in the 50s. Okay. And have had a really, really good run. Um, we'll just take a look briefly here. Okay. What do you think about your legacy? Legacy? Oh, a junk man that made good. <laughs> I still like scrap. I hate to see it go to waste. <laughs> Any business is a challenge. I mean, you you got to keep working, get customers, and taking care of them. And in the meantime, I got married and had seven kids. From one thing to the other, it just kept kind of mushrooming and keeps growing. So, this is where we are today. The uh, this is the Aton Group. Wow. Right? Okay. So we got a, a number of different companies, and they're they're very diverse. They're they're very dissimilar, if you will. Okay. And, uh, and we and when that has purpose. So uh, Valley Truck Parts is right up the street. As a, a large distributor of parts, and they, they rebuild uh, heavy truck parts as well, differentials, transmissions, etc. Goodale Enterprises is into the uh, energy business. Okay. Metal components, you'll see later on today, they uh, provide many of the uh, metal bodies or the the core uh, metal that we use to make the bodies on an HME, and uh, they're one of the top three largest of the group, Valley, Metal Components, and, and HME are the, the big three, if you will. Okay. And then we've got a number of others, as you can see, a mortgage company, uh, we've got a, a residential re or real estate business, as well as a commercial real estate business. Uh, we're into lumber and kitchen components and uh, home goods at the retail level. Van Damme Ironworks does custom iron 
production. Okay. S stairwells for commercial buildings, things of that nature. Nice. We've got uh, Village Motorsports, which is like ATVs, a dealership, ATVs and snowmobiles. Okay. Which business exploded post COVID, yeah, right? Yeah. Everybody was stuck. <laughs> Uh, and then parts to for those type of uh, for that type of equipment, Bassler Turbo Conversions, which builds rebuilds, excuse me, DC threes from the ground up. Wow, it's a really interesting business. Okay, they're located in Wisconsin. Okay, we're all Michigan based except Bassler, I believe. Uh, the foam products company is again commercial supply of uh, foam of different types. And so um, you look at it and you go, boy, it's, it's a really... Uh, yeah, how does that all kind of fit together? Where does it go? I think it's an interesting collection because I think it provides stability. Okay. Right? So um, whether the, whatever the cycle is, secular or, or economic cycles, as they move up and down, right. we've generally got a couple of businesses that are doing pretty well. Right, right. right. So I think it provides a lot of stability. Okay. And uh, HME benefits from that, obviously. And then I think the other piece too is that we we uh, we borrow some competencies, right? So metal components knows metal like better than we do, right? right. And we, yeah. we, we leverage that that knowledge. And the same with Valley Truck Parts and some of the other businesses. There's a, there's a little bit of vertical integration. Okay. Uh, you know we leverage the expertise of some of those where we can. But right, right. Yeah, it, it's working out pretty well. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to have a, a a fire truck company have that many branches or you know connections. That's, you almost can keep a lot of it in the house. If you have truck parts and you have iron works and you have iron or metal components, that all kind of puts together. That ensures that HME is going to be here for a long time. That ensures that you are you know, taking care of the customers for those fire trucks. And I think along with that being privately held, right? So we don't have to chase the earnings, the quarterly earnings, you know, right. every 90 days, right? Okay. So we're, we hope we're making decisions that are, are more long term and again about the employee and about the customer. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I'm, I'm here really because of just a love for the fire service. So I spent six years at Spartan Motors okay. at, at the corporate level, right? Yeah. But as you know, they're uh, one of their very largest and most successful businesses is, is fire trucks. They've since divested that, but the business continues to flourish. So that's where I got an introdu introduction to the, uh, the fire service and really fell in love with it. Right. Um, and, 2017, I ran and did a startup in California for a couple of years. Okay. And then I just uh, had to come back, man. I had to come back to the fire service. So I've been here at That's awesome. HME for two years. Okay. Yeah, and there's no better uh, customer than I think those we serve. My, my story at cocktail parties is always, hey, you roll your truck tonight, heading home, you're hanging there upside down, you don't know what's going to happen, guess who's going to come save you? You're right. Firefighter, yeah. right? Or who'll be there for you? Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we've got a number of full-time firefighters here at the company, um, more than a couple. You'll okay. meet a few outside actually building chassis. Okay. And uh, you met a couple uh, earlier. Right. Uh, that'll I be think part that's of the a tour. big key for what your company is doing. You're actually getting the people that run on the trucks. They know the things that are going on. They know, you know, the quirks that can happen and having them put into the factory and put these things together, they're going to kind of tweak it to make sure that those problems that we normally have, because every vehicle has, whether you're a Ford, GM, or whatever, across the board, you're going to have little issues. But having those guys that actually run in those trucks in your factory floor, it's awesome to see. Yeah, one of the examples we like to use is um, thinking about the configuration of handles on, a, on, a, on the door of a fire truck. Right. Our, our guys know what it's like to have to grab that handle with a glove that's soaking wet, and by the way, it's frozen, Yeah. right? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. he or she has done it before, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's that level, to your point, it's that, that level of knowledge that I think really helps us build a better fire truck and do a better job serving our customers. Right. I'm very excited to see how this whole operation works. This is our first opportunity to get into a factory and see how these fire trucks are put together, and I'm really excited. You think we can go take a look? Absolutely. We're going to put you in the hands of some very good people and uh, give you the best, best look we can. Awesome. All right. I hope you enjoy what you're watching so far. Even though this is a short station cribs, I wanted to give you a sneak peek of what's coming in next month's video. Who are we coming to meet up with? We are going to meet with Ed Boring. Okay. And Ed Boring is our national fleet manager. Okay. Here's Ed right here. Ah. We're very fortunate to have him on the team. All right. He's a uh, retired deputy chief. Yes, sir. From Hilton Head Island. Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Ah. Yeah, so he's down here towards us. Mm -hmm. yeah. so he knows the whole equation and then some, and you're in the best of hands with, 
with Ed. So Mike, we build custom fire engines here. We build them from the ground up, which includes the chassis. Okay. If you look down that hole right there in the building, yep. at the very end, that's literally where the fire truck begins. We roll in the frame rails through that hole, come in and lay them out here. And then this is where we punch all of the holes to mount all of the equipment. So Mike, in this spot here, uh, once we've got all the heavy iron components mounted up, we got to start to pull the wiring and the hoses through to, to connect all the parts and pieces. Right. Together. So here you see uh, air brake components, air lines, and some of the wiring that's going to go into the chassis. Now I can start to see it, how it goes long. How long does it take from station to station to station on average? From where it, where it came in the, the little hole in the wall until here is about five days. Wow. Okay. They're moving right along. That's pretty quick. So if you take a look here, this is a brand new motor right out of the crate. Yeah. And what's happening now are the brackets and all of the accessories are gonna go on it. As, as the cabs move up the assembly line, you can see that more and more things happen to them. Uh, trim pieces are being added. Yeah, the diamond plate, the safety things. And again, the number that's on the door, that's what's telling them what's gonna go in that truck. Exactly, okay. exactly. So if anybody's out there watching this and you're thinking, okay, what I need to do, you basically get a hold of your sales guys, your engineers, you say, hey, these are the functions that I needed to do, and you guys will help them decide what kind of pump it needs to be. Is that exactly, correct? exactly. Okay. So once we've once we've assembled our body that you just saw, okay, we, uh, we bring them down here, um, they're freshly painted, and we start to assemble all the components. So as you can see, this is kind of a bare body, but it's starting to get items hung on to it. Yep, your latches and your doors, and, and this is where the customer can say, I want, bifold doors, I want the roll down door. That's where that number that we talked about is gonna also come into play on what's going on that specific body that we just saw being built. Exactly. So the way that a tilt cab works is we have uh, we have two lift cylinders underneath the chassis here. Okay. You see that cylinder right there? Yeah. So there's one on either side and that takes and it pushes the cab up and of course it, it tilts on a hinge. One of the things that I wanna you know, point out, you know, having a vehicle that you bring to do a demo, mm -hmm. I have the ability to do what we used to do, is kick the tires, make sure that they're good, open the handles, feel that kind of stuff, close the doors and, and feel the quality of buildmanship or construction that you guys put into these kind of things. That's very important to us. All right, Ed, so where are we now in your plant? We kind of walked away from the demo model and we walked uh, a couple feet away. Where are we now? Sure. Well, Mike, one of the, when we talk about that final stage, you know, where we're, where we're getting the truck ready to, uh, for the customer, one of the last things we have to do is we need to do the, the pump testing. Okay. As you know, um, we annually pump test our fire engines out in the field, but um, in order to find that number, we have to, uh, do the first a uh, first test here. Yeah, right. So we engineer it to do a certain amount of, of work at a certain RPM and so on, but this is where we validate that. So we have our third parties like UL come in and they do the testing right here alongside of us. So uh, we have two bays here. Each one has about 40,000 gallons of water in the in the ground beneath us. Okay. And uh, so we, we draft that water out of the floor into the fire pump, and then we have a discharge port in the back that uh, pumps that water back into the, into the tank. And of course, from there, we hook up our pedo gauge and all that stuff, and that's where we, we take all of our readings. So uh, a little hard to see it from this angle, but uh, we can take a look at another truck back here, a little smaller one. You kind of see what the what the back end of the of the process looks like. Yeah, so. sure. Let's walk that way. <clears throat> I think it's actually pretty cool that you you know thinking about the whole process of building a fire truck and incorporating into your building, not just your manufacturing process, but your building adding that tank of water that you know you're going to have to use and, and test these. Right. So again, you would ask me about the size of the pump. So we, this particular case here, this is a hundred GPM pump, but it still needs to be certified and tested to, to the manufacturer standard. You know, it still has to perform out in the field. So uh, here's that hundred GPM version and right on up to 2000, which we, we do okay. here as well. But um, as you can see, this uh, this arrangement here, this is the the pedo. This is your pedo gauge right here. Yeah. And uh, we put the different size tips on there, and all of that goes back to a wonderful remote gauge system over here. Where we read the pedo pressure. Okay. The intake pressure or the suction pressure. Yeah. Master discharge pressure. 
and, uh, and any nozzles that we're operating in addition to that. And then uh, we also have to measure the, uh, the water temperature as well to make sure that we're, uh, our performance is uh, right. consistent. Right. So uh, very neat area as well. And uh, I think uh, it's a value component to, you know, when I'm thinking about getting a fire truck or any fire apparatus that, you know, you guys are actually, you tell me something, I believe you, <clears throat> I purchase it, but then you also testing it and you're kind of proving it to yourself what we told you and how we're gonna build this 100 gallon per minute pump, that's what it is. And you guys are testing that. Oh, sure. There's nothing better than a third party to come in and validate expectations yep. and actual performance. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. So as we, you know, making our way back to the office and we're finishing up this tour, which is fantastic. Thank you for taking us around. I noticed you have this mural on the wall. Can you explain to me what this is about and you know, what's on it here? Sure. Well, this is kind of the, the, the background. This is the DNA of this company. So two different uh, aspects you're going to see. One is you see some pretty heavy duty stuff. And when we first started the tour, I talked about Hendrickson and the name and the heavy duty components. Well, you can see here are tr trucks that, that uh, haul tanks around, uh, cement mixer chassis, well drilling, cranes, all of that. That's that chassis DNA that we talk about. And then the Aaron Fox side, goes back way back, which is the fire engines side of it. And at one point we melted all that together. And this is kind of that historical perspective of it. And you can kind of see as you go out the other end, the more traditional fire engine that you see built today. This actually reminds me of firehouses because mm -hmm. you know all every firehouse we go to, we hold that history. We put it on the walls, we're proud of it. We have the trophies, we have that history, and it shows that next generation what we're about. Sure. So when you guys get a new hire or somebody like that, you can actually take them here and say, this is what we're working for. This is the foundation of this company, and this is where we're going, and then now. Oh yeah. So having this brings me back to a firehouse. <laughs> so. Well, and we try, to, we try to operate within our organization as a, as, like the fire department does. Um, you know, it hits a dynamic business, just like the fire service. It's constantly changing. You take the information you have at the moment, and when you have to modify and, and roll with it and and um, move, you know, re-establish your, your goals, that's what we do here. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. I appreciate that you guys do that. So to your point from a moment ago, we try and embrace that fire station feeling, right? Yeah. With some nostalgia here. Yeah, you got the old game well system on, you got a, a old garage, right? and this looks, like the front of a firehouse. Doesn't it? Yeah. So, Including uh, the, the office area here. Right, and even the mural that's on this wall, you got the city landscape that's going up here. So what is this room? This is the showroom. So this is where uh, at the very end of the process, once the truck has finished, the, made it through the finished process, cleared quality control, and is in fact ready for a customer to see, our dealers that actually sold the truck participate in the final inspection. And I think that's one of our key messages here is that we're nothing without our dealer channel, right? As I mentioned earlier, they really know the fire departments that are actually making the purchase decision. Right. They know how they spec a fire truck. They know how they go about managing the bid process. They know what, has, what apparatus has worked well in the past and what hasn't, right? And so they bring a huge value add component. And it kind of culminates here where the truck's done and the customer's ready to look at the final product and the dealer's here with us going through that arm and arm. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good way to do this. It's nice and uh, roomy so I can get all the way around it. I can open all the cabinets. I can get up on top of it if I need to and actually do that kick test that we talked about with your demo. And we really love it in like December. Yeah. When it's 12 degrees outside. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. so you talked about many different dealers. Do you guys sell uh, nationwide or do you have a region that you guys pretty much stick to? We do like every fire apparatus manufacturer we've got certain regions where we're stronger than others right? Sure. There's no question about that. In fact Aaron's Fox as we may have talked about previously uh, was just hugely successful in the Northeast right and so there's some regional variation but we've got distribution nationally and uh, a number of dealers that have been with us for decades right so uh, they're an important component of everything we do. And if there's any success we have, they're a big part. Okay. So no matter where you're at in the country, in all 50 states, definitely try to find a dealer that deals with the HME fire trucks. You've now seen the quality of how they make these trucks, the quality of the builds and everything like that. It's definitely worth investing in. Uh, get a hold of one of these dealers and I'm sure they'll get you any fire truck that you need. Firetrucks.com. That's our website and all you need to know. All right. Thanks again. Yep. Thank you. 
Russell, thank you for inviting us out, brother. I yeah. really appreciate it's it. It's a pleasure. Ed, fantastic Great. tour. Thank you, know, you. it was I wonderful. Learned so much today, we really appreciate it. Remember to hit subscribe and notification for next month's video on Day to Life of a Fire Truck. That's gonna be an adventure that you won't wanna miss. While you're waiting for that video, make sure to hit all of our other amazing videos. We have content that is not only entertaining, but informative.